Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, want to thank all the Patreons uh, out there. We do. We want to say a huge thank you because Patreon, truly, you guys, it keeps us up and running. It absolutely does. And in case you've never looked, there are different layers to Patreon. Uh, everywhere from one dollar a month which again if you did pay for a year in advance you actually save 10 percent so it comes down to about two point something cents per day um, up to five dollars ten dollars 25 50 and a hundred and at the 50 and a hundred level you actually uh, get sessions so do check that out as well we're going to talk about the consciousness ladder you know this maybe as an artistic representation of Jacob's Ladder uh, from that vision of angels going up and down the, the ladder in, uh, to the heavens. Yes, oh, there's a lot of different ways we could look at that, but we're, we're not going to talk necessarily about Jacob's Ladder. We want to talk about the Consciousness Ladder because it is kind of like a ladder that we go through as the soul evolves. One thing I wanted to point out that might help those that have ever looked at music or studied music is, you know, we have 12 tones or semitones in music. As you can see, there's holes and then there's flats and sharps and you have seven whole notes and you have five flats and sharps. Kind of depends on how you're looking at it is whether it's a flat or a sharp. And then what you have is other octaves other octaves and i think this is a great way to kind of visualize the ladder of consciousness if we look at uh the keyboard for instance you'll see there's a lot of c's <laughs> the note c right and like when you're finding the keyboard you look for 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 middle c and then you put your finger there and you know okay i'm on middle c so now i can figure out what everything else is and if we want to look at it from a different point of view we could look at this as a, as another way of visualizing consciousness on its journey through all different levels of creation and existence Ultimately, we are consciousness having a temporary human experience. You weren't necessarily always a human, and you won't necessarily always be a human. Human is a temporary thing. It's an exploration of a certain way of living and exploring. And again, this is temporary, but we are eternal. And, you know, if you're listening to this channel, you're definitely someone who is expanded and you're awake and you're aware, but there's all kinds of different levels to that. So even even if, if you are awake and aware and you're expanded and you're an old soul in one way, there's so many other ways that you're still a young soul. So we're always just kind of on this perpetual path that no matter how high up you go somewhere along the line you're still kind of on the bottom and you're still kind of learning absolutely <clears throat> so again we could even you know take a look at this and think about this as different densities and you know say from third density living to going to fourth density living and then going on up to fifth and sixth and on up through the line the importance to recognize is there's subdivisions within each level. And I know you were getting message today from the guides about that. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's there's so I, I guess school is the best way for me to parallel it or help people understand it. You know, when we when we um, get to a certain age, we go to kindergarten and first, second, third grade and. You know, you might be in sixth grade and you might feel like, oh, yeah, you're top dog. You're you're the top of the class. You know, you've conquered all of these other areas down below you. But then, um, well, depending on the school, you go to seventh grade, crash. You're right at the bottom of the ladder again <laughs> and you have so much to learn. There is so much, so many heavy things on you. Everything is new again. Everything is um difficult once again and you're a little bit scared and you're a little bit lonely and you're a little bit fearful 
Um, and I think we do tend to quickly forget how far we've come in this life already when we get faced with something new and different and frightening. Um, one way that I try to gauge how far I've come with my own healing journey is to look back and see what I've been through. And that really helps me say, hey, you know, it's you're not so bad. You're you're doing fine. Look what you look what you have conquered so far. Look at the things that you've overcome. You know, this one little thing right here in front of you is nothing compared to what you have been through. And in the life that we live, I, I really think that the first part of it is <laughs> all about living that life and the second part of it is all about healing and awakening to that life and just understanding a new way of being as a soul when we look at the soul typically when it leaves the physical body it's and it's even in some of the mystery traditions you'll if you've ever read the uh, egyptian book of the dead and you know there's this period of introspection and retrospection and and processing and and that's what normally should happen uh and that period it can take a very indeterminate period of time depending on the level of trauma uh for the soul again we come into these lives with a set of goals in mind we do have goals and typically these are lessons that we haven't fully learned or you know sometimes you get those freebie lives where they're just simply you're coming in just just to be just to be in a body again and just to do something different in order to create a world for you that you can then explore later when you're out of the body mm -hmm. right you know but it's all about expansion ultimately and i don't always like to use the word trauma but you know for understanding purposes that it, it is easy How, however everything that we go through definitely has purpose there's there's something to it that is going to advance you wherever you're at and, and sometimes some of these things are really really horrible so i i don't want to minimize anyone's trauma at all but they're they can be absolutely horrible um, and it may take years. Uh, it could take, you know, a majority of that lifetime to get past this trauma. But I can tell you from experience, this is to bring you expansion. And it is for your evolution. Whatever this trauma is, it's for you to be able to really discover who you are and be better. And then once you do that then you can turn and you can help other people who are going through the very same thing. And that's the blessing. The soul could come into a, a human body at some point in time. It could also um, be in the body of an animal or a bird. When we look here, you see the piano. You know, the piano is one way of, of expressing this consciousness louder. And then this is a guitar fretboard. So we can see it. it's it's another way to experience consciousness. It's another way to express music. Um, and it's just different. And this is, again, uh, part of the play that goes on with the soul. It is. It's, you know, something that we get to discover about ourselves. And sometimes you might realize that, wow, you have some notes that you've never really discovered before. <laughs> what are those for? What do they do? What can I make with them? But this is really a, a journey of, of discovery. It is. Now, the, when we come into this world, and this world is a challenging one in so many ways, um, because, again, it is a very, very uh, heavy, heavy, dense existence. You, you could look at these different levels to our experience of being in this world. Now, the first level <clears throat> being that you're totally in the world and that is your reality and you're not even really aware of yourself uh, so much as, as Rama's having some dreams. If you uh, hear any strange sounds in the backgrounds, it's not a passing whale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Rama. Um, but yeah, absolutely. There is probably... Um, a, <laughs> there is pr probably a good portion if not majority of the world that is kind of living in the culture scape of the world 
that's their reality. They haven't really questioned anything. You know, part of the blessing of this time and the change of the yugas with everything going on is the awakening to the fact that there's something wrong with the system. There is something wrong with this paradigm that we've been in our whole lives. And those that were heavy, heavy into the culture scape and really didn't think there was anything wrong. They, they accepted it fully. And they maybe didn't go and explore uh, things uh, that some might call fringe, you know, like again, uh, delving deep into uh, all the spiritual practices, but just going along with the mainstream uh, spiritual practices. Well, for them, maybe it's the biggest shock as those that have gone and done the work already understand that they've had a certain awakening and they, they start to understand that the paradigm that we're sold is, 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 is not it. It's not it. it it's it's self-limiting. So you go and have this awakening and then you got to kind of redo yourself. You got to kind of undo all that that was programmed in order to figure out, you know, who, who am I and who do I want to be? And then you excel at being yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, living in the culture scape. This one is this one is basically your education. It, it's what they teach you. It, it's in your indoctrination. It's not the thing that expands you, even though it looks like an expansion because you're learning new things. Right. No, that's that's the indoctrination, and we all go through that. So we're given things on a platter for us to think, feel, say, and do. And then we get out into the world, and we start doing these things that they, they tell us. And then we realize that, no, not everything I was taught was necessarily true. At some point, we've seen things go the wrong way enough times that you just you really cannot ignore it anymore. And unfortunately... Many times that is a personal experience or you see someone get hurt. That's your awakening. Um, and then relearning everything, letting it go, dropping it, and then finding that new understanding and then becoming you. It's like learning like, wow, you know, this has been a long journey. And they, I was told about who I was, but no, that's not who I was. Who am I really? So then you start again. Yes, absolutely. You know, when we look at the notes, too, some may have picked up that interesting that we have these 12 notes. Uh, and then you have references to 12 tribes of, of Israel. Um, you have 12 months in the year. And, and it goes on and on with the sim symbolism. There's a lot of encoded symbolism uh, to how the matrix is created, the, the original matrix, the good ma matrix that we we ultimately, our higher selves, have created along with uh, certain entities that we would probably easiest describe as creator gods, so to speak. I hate using that G word, though, because it's been so distorted. Uh, again, these are all beings. These are all beings. That's the thing to realize. They're all beings. So, you know, again, there is one, ultimately one source that is having all of this experience from the standpoint of y dividing itself up into fractals. Fractals are smaller units that have all the programming of the original unit, so to speak. And we see fractals all throughout nature. And we've touched on that many, many times. Uh, so that is also one of the keys. When you see something that doesn't conform to the fractal nature of the universe. And I'll bring it up for the first timers that haven't seen this um, before. Then you know something is, uh, is, is not accurate. And, and that's, that's a, that, that is one of the measuring sticks I'll always kind of use. Is, is like, it does, does this fit in the pattern that we see out there in the universe? So when we see all these things, like this is a good one just to give you, uh, for instance, when we look at the human energy field, it's a torus. Same thing with the Earth, same thing with the galactic plane, same thing with the universe itself. And yet when we look at cellular mitosis or cellular division, it forms the same sort of pattern. 
And we could see uh, so many other things from the, the, the way nature spirals out. Our consciousness spirals out. You look at you know, the zygote forming and you look at how it forms after the, sh the shapes that we see. Again, time and time again in nature, you could look to pi and you could look to so many different encodings that tell you uh, this this matrix was programmed by a very very intelligent being with help from other beings and you know again there is a creator and there is also evolution which is part of the natural program of things so we see these patterns time and time again when you look to uh, leaves and then you could look to, at your hand and see the veins and you could look at you know, rivers flowing, everything has the same sort of symmetry and form to it. So this is, again, a way to uh, kind of look at and understand how the universe works. Um, so I just wanted to kind of cover that again quickly. Uh, again, there is a programming ladder that has been programmed into humanity that leads basically in, in an endless loop that will lead you nowhere. Uh, because again, it's going to be more about the, the logical side of things, so to speak. And, you know, you have that emotional versus you have that left brain, right brain uh, interaction between them, the emotional component and the logical component. And the logical is based on data, which again, now many people are starting to realize <laughs> almost all the data in this world we have is distorted and not factual. So what has that done? It's created this loop, this loop in our mind, our minds that limits our perspectives to the point where many people hard as they would try they would not be able to see something out of the box that has already limited their minds mm -hmm. and, and you know this is our belief system and this is where things can get yucky if, if someone's belief system is feeling threatened they may lash out they may threaten themselves they may get very very angry and it, it's because they're afraid but this is basically what happens. It just creates this endless loop and they give you all the data that you need to live in this loop for your in, entire life unless you decide to break it. Now, um, some some people might see that, I you know, I really believe that there are those out there that are at their post to watch other people who are going through an awakening and they're their post or their job is to create some turmoil for that person who is going through an awakening because they like to keep people in a herd it's like the herd dog sees the sheep going out you know on its own realizing a whole new world the herd dog's job is to bite those ankles and get that sheep back in line and and unfortunately we live in a world where where people are hired and and that's what they do just to keep everyone in line the other part of it is belief system you know we're, we're put through a belief system where we tattle on each other and if somebody believes differently you know 10 other people are going to come and surround them and say oh no 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 you cannot believe like this and under peer pressure you know they're they're kind of pushed back into their belief system where it's safe because in, in we are herd animals we don't want to be ostracized from the herd we know we need each other to survive so not because we necessarily agree with everything that's being told to us but many times out of necessity people will just step back into the herd um the other interesting thing i think about this ladder is it's um for for channels the channels out there you you really have to get to the point where you break this uh conclusion that you that you come up through with all the information that you've been given all of that has to basically kind of be shattered and and it's it's not an easy process it, it can be a very traumatizing process and it but it does allow you to reach out into the universe and grab information and pull it in 
and give you a higher understanding if you are able to take this data and just set it down and find information that's out there from another density, another being, another place. But it, it does take a little bit of practice. And um, But it's just different, you know. So I like this ladder. There were several things that stuck out to me and especially the channeling aspect of it was a lot of fun and you have to keep in mind when you're channeling you're channeling beings that are on different areas in different densities and they might they probably don't live with the same things you do they definitely don't live in the same density they're probably not looking at the idea of death so they're giving you information based on their reality not based on how you live so I'm not saying that's bad or anything it's just something that we need to keep in mind if we are channeling these beings yeah that's that's um a good thing to bring up is just the fact that on these other densities you know it's not like here you know here it's over in the blink of an eye and then we're gonna redo from a new perspective we might come right back and do it right over again or or we may not we might say enough with that you know, and we might think that we're going to say enough with that, and then we might really come right back again because you know, once we're out, everything changes. The perspective totally changes. You know, you could equate the the ladder of consciousness with the chakras again too, as we talked about many many times. When we are just simply at, at root chakra level, and you know, we that's basic, uh, just existence you can't really let the energy flow upwards if you have these fears that are blocking the chakras at the lower level your energy will not flow upwards and thus you're kind of cut off from yourself because again each one of these chakras is a dimensional portal into another reality and there's another level of you there uh, so this is a little yogi here and you can see he's got depictions of the different chakras on his body as well as uh, different tattoos on different points in this body and as we see you you can also equate this consciousness consciousness ladder with different emotions absolutely because the reality is emotions they they are what ends up um, setting the tone for your frequency emotions are your frequency uh, it's just again realizing this is a matter of unlearning so much that we were taught and then also exploring yourself and it can be very very challenging uh, to kind of redo yourself especially if we are a little bit later in life but it, it's never too late to stop and where you are and what you're able to achieve does does affect you know where you're going to start off from when you leave the body so this is another reason why we have all the non-stop all the non-stop wars and conflict and everything because what they're really trying to do is sabotage the soul so it's going to come right back to the same uh, frequency and yet what you can reach for while you're in the body uh is 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 reach for those higher states of consciousness you know which again uh we can express through the emotions and then we could start at a higher place and point you know just like when you when you first start to learn something like like say guitar and it's just so painful to try to hold one chord and strum one clear chord uh, in a nice manner it, it takes time it takes thousands of repetitions same thing with shooting a basketball anything when you first really start something there's a learning curve mm -hmm. right and, and it does get a little more challenging the older you get but that doesn't mean that you look away from it because once you see the opportunity out there boy i mean it is endless there is so much to be understood out in the universe once you're awake and once you realize that uh there's there's so much more so it's something that you definitely want to follow through with if you find the opportunity and you're going through an awakening i mean take it as far as you can possibly go go as run with that ball as far as you can because there's <clears throat> there's there's no regrets in that there's no regrets in understanding as much as possible when you're in this 3d realm 
it's it's nothing but good and awe and and amazing and you know then we have this consciousness level paradigm and we have anger being at the very very bottom and then we go up to courage and then we go up to love and then we go up to enlightenment and i'm here to say i mean i think it's na the natural thing to say is enlightenment is where you want to be but that doesn't mean that anger is any less important than enlightenment because in order to reach enlightenment we need to go through all of the emotions a lot of times anger can drive us to enlightenment so you can't say anger is really bad if it brings you to a good place no but if it is what's dominating us like say anger fear uh and lust and greed <laughs> are dominating us then you, there's no way you're going to transmute that um, consciousness again it's recognizing it's recognizing it and it's it's understanding so that you can then control your emotions and understand how things progress h2o can you know manifest as ice and and the uh, as ice uh, the vibrational rate of the particles is slow right and then as that speeds up it turns into water and water can start to flow into new places where ice is kind of stuck <laughs> so to speak and then steam can float up and rise up uh, into the atmosphere as it heats up even more and, and the same thing you can see again if if our paradigm that we are living every day is just anger to fear to jealousy greed hate all these things you know lust again it, it's all just an endless cycle that doesn't lead to anywhere higher and thus that's how consciousness gets trapped there's different depictions i wanted to give you a few different depictions because again it, it, people might have certain things in different places uh it's certainly not the case where it's completely agreed upon you know what is your highest emotion and what's your lowest emotion you know right here you have a scale that has shame there and and there's two other ones here uh you have this one going on it has damnation resignation sorrow lust etc and this one's equating it to um, hell down in the lower realms shame guilt apathy grief fear right that he he or she is identifying this with hell well i mean if you go by the biblical phrase the fear of god is the beginning of all wisdom that's fear that's right here that's that's kind of an emotional frequency that's going to keep you in the hellish realms according to this particular paradigm yeah absolutely and then if you do believe again in that whole original sin that's putting guilt and shame on you which is a lower frequency so this is how we know it's it's not correct it's being used to to cause you to have a low frequency which keeps you in in the resonance of the beings that control this planet this is exactly what their um their their mainstream religious philosophies are based on right original sin and fear uh, fear of punishment guilt shame etc and you know the, the being itself i am a vengeful angry god e e okay well you're you're not you're not high frequency that's the bottom line so is, is that what we want to choose mm, i don't think so mm -hmm. i'm sorry sita's throwing a little bit of a fit in the background because she's hungry and she wants to eat now she has the mentality of about a three-year-old which is absolutely adorable i'm hungry feed me now <laughs> so even if you're doing a video but this one this one you know to me um sometimes people are victimized and sometimes they really are hurt so they might sit in a, a frequency of shame guilt apathy grief fear and anger and you know what some sometimes you you have to sit there until you're done with it until you are ready to move out of it but to me that's more like processing and the part where um 
when it's done to you, when someone says you're born of original sin, now that is created. That's wrong. To me, that's very wrong. But I want to address the people who have been through total and complete and utter hell. And if you're feeling horrible, you deserve to fe feel horrible because there's a process about it. There's a process that happens so that you can feel all of these emotions and eventually you just rise up and you rise out of that. But you never, you never short yourself. You never, you know, you, you can't feel uh, guilt over feeling shame. I mean, if you feel shame, you feel shame. You need to look at it closer. You need to um, take a peek at it. You know, what, what is it, what is it helping you with right now? Every emotion has a purpose. That's what I'm saying. They're, they're not, they're not to be just shoved aside. We need to feel them because in doing so, this brings us to understanding and expansion. It brings us to a new place when we give ourselves those, that attention that we deserve you know, d based on what whatever happened to us, whatever we have gone through, we de we deserve love and attention. And there is a part of us that might need to feel certain things, and that's not a bad thing. But it is something we want to do is to fulfill that feeling as much as you need to, and then move up and out of it because it's not something that you want to stay in. To stay in would actually make the brain um, kind of build these pathways. And once the pathways are built, it's like you, you have to find another way out. So it is a very, very complicated type of energy, but you definitely don't want to sit there. You always want to be trying to do a little bit better, a little bit better, and a little bit better. Think your way up. And sometimes people have to do baby steps. Sometimes they can't go from A to W. You know, they have to go from A to B to C. They have to get things that are palatable. They have to get things that they can bring in. You know, if you go to a buffet, a big, big buffet, you look at all that food and you put it all on your plate, that's going to overwhelm you. That's going to totally overwhelm you. But if you go and you just get a couple of pieces at a time and you're looking at this plate, it's like, okay, I can do this. You know, it's the old adage, like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And you'll get there. I don't. I don't think I'd ever eat an elephant. But anyway, <laughs> when you look at the Baphomet statue, they they tell you everything right here, and the the culmination of all the life force energies, which are represented by the Ida and the Pagala, the Shashimna, which is the two snakes, like a masculine snake, a feminine snake, and the unified energy of the two, terminating at the self center the i am center the solar plexus chakra that tells you everything no connection to the heart center no connection to higher self so you know that is just so telling and it it really really says everything when you see right here they're putting pride right in the 3d uh and you're sold on pride a country pride uh you know be proud you're a christian be proud you're a muslim be proud whatever you know, you're, you're Russian or Chinese or American, wh whatever it is. Pride is not a very high frequency. Sure, maybe it's higher than these others, but it's still not high on the consciousness ladder, and it is limiting. It is limiting, because when we move out of 3D and you're moving into the fourth uh, density, uh, you're moving into things of, uh, as you see here, one of the next steps is, uh, neutrality and 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 maintaining your equilibrium and over here acceptance of, of where we are and with that acceptance then we're willing to to move into the higher realms as you look towards what they're starting to equate as paradise uh, you know the new humanity consciousness in in the upper fourth density is is not a bad place uh, the lower force density is not a great place. So again, we when we are out of the body, fourth density is, is where most of us are residing. Some can go and reside in fifth. Uh, and in these times with the changing of the yugas, uh, naturally, you know, again, people can move more freely with uh, the higher the higher vibes that are coming into uh 
resonance all around us. You know, there there are some uh, thoughts, and I can only tell you really from the experience that we've had, like seeing, uh, I've shared with you uh, my mother's thoughts to come back and have another uh, life experience, and that's what she was thinking for about two years after dying, as Cindy was able to contact her regularly, and and I I was blessed uh, to have Cindy uh, one one night um, go full under and my mother come through, and it was wonderful to feel my to actually hear my mother's voice from the other side. That was a huge huge blessing. Um, and yet it was it was a very strong voice. It was a different voice because she was up on the fifth density now. So when we say the other side, you know, typically I think we're meaning 4D because 3D and 4D are part of the same coin. And then 5D, that's that's more where we're into the higher self. And yet there's even more levels to that. that that's still a very, very simplified way of putting it. It is, you know, and, and when we're talking about the five, fifth dimension, I believe there is a fifth dimension way of living that you can be here in the 3D. So it, it is expansive and it can go go along different dimensions. But um, we are living in a world where there's understanding of unity consciousness, but I don't want that to take away from the blessing of the individual person that we came here to be and have an individual experience that source chipped off part of itself so you could feel everything that source feels and feel everything out of love in the individual aspect so although unity consciousness is wonderful it's still a blessing that we are here in these bodies doing our doing our own thing Absolutely. As you watch this little cutie decide to put themselves in, uh, well, not quite, not quite a box, but yeah, finds comfort in the container. So many people do find comfort in your container, and so many people don't want to get out of the box because they're too afraid to get out of the box. The, you know, everything in their existence has been all about that box that was created for them, and they've snuggled on into it. And it's terrifying to get out of that box for, for many people. And that's totally understandable. But all in due time when it is your time. And it might be that you still need a thousand or ten thousand incarnations uh, in 3D before you're ready to even consider going up to 5D. And then there may be also others in your family that are more than ready, willing and able to make that jump in a moment's notice. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yes, each one of us unique, unique fractals of Source. We are Source Blessed and Namaste. Namaste.